So here we go again. It's Comics Are Great, the visual storytelling show, and this is a special one because even though this is episode 14, this is uh, episode one of a brand new Comics Are Great where we're broadcasting out of the Ann Arbor District Library and streaming live on Ustream. So if we're, people are downloading this after the fact, uh, you can watch by going to comicsagreat.tv. Uh, we're going to be recording every Wednesday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And, uh, but it's going to be essentially the same show with just a few new features. And uh, today, I've got a, a couple people who are familiar to the roundtable discussions. Uh, Mr. Dave Roman and Raina Telgemeier. You guys should introduce yourselves to, or should I say hi at least, because we are being, this is going to be an audio podcast after the fact. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, Dave. I know. So actually, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to actually introduce you guys and let you guys... Uh, sort of introduce yourselves to the public because one of the reasons I decided to take this show to the Ann Arbor District Library was to put a little bit more of a, um, oh, how do we put it, uh, local spin on it, introducing the people of Michigan to some of the most awesome cartoonists that are uh, available. And so I'm going to, hopefully this thing will uh, be watched and listened to by non-practitioners of comics. And so uh, Raina Telgemeier, we'll start with you, Eisner nominee. Raina Telgemeier, and uh, for those who don't know what, what an Eisner is, that's kind of one, of, that's a big deal of an award, right? It's kind of the Oscar of comics, right? That's what a lot of people say, yeah, they call it the Oscar <laughs> of comics. So you were nominated for a book called uh, Smile, right? It is called Smile, yes. Um, do you need me to talk about it? Yes, tell, tell people, is it, <laughs> do the pitch that you've done uh, about 150,000 times over the last however many months. Okay, Smile is the true story of how I knocked out my two front teeth when I was 11 years old and the four and a half subsequent years that it took for them to look like this again. And um, it happened when I was in middle school, so I was um, already an awkward person and already sort of feeling self-conscious about the way I looked. And so not having two front teeth sort of made it that much more awful. <laughs> um, so it's really about dealing with friends who mistreat you and with boys when you're sort of starting to get interested in boys, I guess, in your case, girls. Um, and how I, I sort of figure out who I was. <laughs> so the story is all in one graphic novel. And there you have it. <laughs> published, published by Scholastic, available at uh, yeah. finer retail outlets today. And if you are a library who does not have Smile in your collection, you're missing out, right? Yes. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I've been doing the, the Kids Read Comics Super Fun Tour where I've been visiting 20-something libraries around the state doing free workshops. And uh, at every workshop stop, I would say, uh, oh, you should come to Kids Read Comics this summer. Raina Telgemeier is going to be there. And at least, you know, 10, 15 percent of the room would gasp, you know. It, <laughs> it, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, and then, then the librarian, every once in a while, the librarian would say to me, uh, what smile? Where do I find it? I'm like, oh, are you kidding me? Your kids know what it is. You know, you should be having this your, on your shelf. So, so yeah, yes, yeah, so it's published through Scholastic. Uh, Smile, it was originally called Smile a Dental Drama, wasn't it? Actually, I should, that was what was a I'm on camera yeah. so I can say, this is what it looks like, everybody. See? So, um, can, what's that? Um, no, go ahead. I was just talking, but it's not important. <laughs> Every, <laughs> you guys are the guests. You're the important ones today. Uh, <laughs> but sitting next to me. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Dave. Uh, Dave has a book coming out, and uh, it's kind of a big whoop de doo right? First, second publishing, one of the greatest publishers in comics right now, and you've got a book coming out called Astronaut Academy. <laughs> <laughs> like a rate of hoops, Dave's hand. Like, like, a, like a mother. Oh, oh, it looks like their Skype froze. Did we lose him? I think we lost him. Okay, well, then I'll turn to while we wait to get them back. Uh... Get the, yep, connection lost. Let's see if I can call him again. This is the wonders of live, live I like, audio. Video. I like everything about how this is going so far. <laughs> it's been super good. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Yeah. So while we're waiting for them to reconnect, I'll introduce the other Eisner nominee in the room. And this this guy's actually in the room. His name is Malky, David Malky, to you. And uh, Malky with an exclamation point, right? Yes, sir, absolutely. The author of wondermark.com. And let's see, dapper caps and pedal copters. I can put it in the shot, maybe. No, no. Here, I'll let you hold it. There you go. <clears throat> this is the latest book. This ca this is came out uh, last year, so this is the most recent. And these books are published by Dark Horse. Dark Horse, uh, clever tricks to stave off death. 
Beards of Our Forefathers. That was one of the earlier ones, wasn't it? That was the first Dark Horse book, yeah. Okay, yeah. So introduce yourself to people who know nothing about you. Uh, sure. All two of them. <laughs> well, uh, wondermark.com is where, where my comics live online. And they are uh, newspaper-style uh, gag strips, but created using illustrations from old books. So it's sort of a unique way to make a comic. Got it? Hey, there they are. <laughs> hey, can you see us or, or anything? Uh, let's try putting yeah. the video back on. For that. Oh, that was it. No, no, click that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There we go. We got you back. Great. All right. Okay, cool. So. Yeah. Cool. Well, yeah. Why don't you talk about Dave since since we well, got cut well, off? No, well, no, no. You got cut off by me calling them. So finish, finish your your. All bit right. Here. So so wondermark.com. Uh, comics that are created using illustrations and material from from old like magazines, catalogs, uh, storybooks from the 1800s. So old engravings and woodcuts that I scan, take apart in Photoshop, put back together into something else, usually comics. And uh, it's what I, what I like to call a collaboration with the dead. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so it's kind of like uh, like a collage then. Yeah, the, all the comics uh, are made with a collage technique, and so it's uh, it's cut and paste sort of in a in a, in a very uh, what I think is a very interesting way. It's a, it's a very distinctive way to do a comic, in my opinion. And uh, it is uh, again the books are from Dark Horse, uh, but the strip also runs online uh, twice a week. New material at uh, Wondermark.com. And you also uh, have a book. Well, let's see. Let's talk. We can talk about Machine of Death, and we can talk about Tweet Me Harder. Sure. Well, Machine of Death is a is a collection of short stories that I have co-edited and contributed to, uh, which starts with the basic premise of, well, what if there was a machine that could tell you how you died, and if that machine existed, how would it change the world? Uh, and so what we did was we this uh, was uh, an initial concept by my friend Ryan North, who does a comic called Dinosaur Comics, and it was uh, a really compelling idea. And so we presented this premise to writers all over the world and said, what, what could you do with this? If you start here, where, where do you go? And so we read almost 700 stories and wow. pick, picked our favorite 34 to make a, make a book of. And so uh, every story in the book is by a different author, and it starts with that basic premise and then goes out a, a different direction, uh, trying to explore all the corners of all the various uh, uh, options that this premise could suggest. And uh, so it's a really diverse collection. Uh, some of the stories are funny, some of them are sad, some of them are serious, some of them are, are, are more, uh, more silly. And um, it's a really, I think it's a really great uh, showcase for a lot of uh, authors and illustrators, because um, every story is also illustrated by a comics artist. Um, it's a showcase for a lot of work by cool people that otherwise you may not have had a chance to, to experience yet. So that book is available. Um, in bookstores everywhere, um, thanks to a sort of a grassroots marketing campaign. Um, <laughs> I want to I talk about that a little bit later. I want to talk about promotion with you guys, because both of you guys, uh, both Reina and Malky, have done some really interesting things for self-promotion, and you've been tweeting while you've been in Ann Arbor. By the way, I want to I wanna say, I hope you found Ann Arbor more walkable than the Detroit area. <laughs> <laughs> Ann Arbor has been great. I have enjoyed everything about Ann Arbor. I've been here for, for uh, approximately, um, I don't know, 20 hours, and I've, I've enjoyed it tremendously. And I was in Dearborn for five days, and <laughs> it was, I mean, it was, it, was a, it was a fun event that I was at, and I, I'm happy for the folks uh, there to bring me out. But it was, um, I felt trapped. Yeah. Aww, I, 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 I couldn't walk anywhere, and I tried to walk somewhere, and I got stymied by the city <laughs> saying, no, we have no sidewalks. No, it's all highways. You can't cross any of them. If you try and walk, you'll end up at Ford Corporate Headquarters, <laughs> uh, which is sort of but a... did you have a pony dog? <laughs> I didn't have anything except misery. <laughs> uh, so I, I, I feel like the city was saying, why are you trying to walk? Don't you know where you are? Don't you know you're here at, in Ford Town? In, in the Motor City, yeah, after so. all. So, but yeah, you were, you were actually posting tweets. Um, it's Malky on the Twitters, right? And yeah. uh, you were posting actually your map location from, yeah. from your, uh, from your uh, maps application. And it was really, I knew, I knew the area you were in, and that is, that is uh, patently unwalkable. And yeah, there's only one, all the roads are boulevards, and it's all highways, and yeah, it's impossible to get around that area. It was, I did eventually get back to where I was going to find myself blocked by a giant fence uh, at several points. Um, <laughs> Uh, all told, it took me uh, 1.7 hours to walk 1.3 miles. <laughs> Which, uh, anyway, 
Uh, great, great people, great show. Not, not a good afternoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was very frustrating to watch. But so, yeah, when I, 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 was, I was hoping that Ann Arbor would treat you better. Uh, it's a good town. Yeah, so far it's been great. Oh, good. But, um, but anyway, yes, yeah, so then you also do, a sh- uh, well, you just finished yeah. a series called Tweet Me Harder, which, uh, wow, it's a lot like what we're doing now, except uh, you guys are usually funny when you do that. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, uh, um, yeah, we just, we just finished the show, but it's still available on iTunes and on our website, tweetmeharder.com. It's a collaboration with uh, my friend Chris Straub, who's also a cartoonist. You may have seen him on uh, Penny Arcade TV or, or his comics, uh, Chainsaw Suit or Star Slipper or F Chords, and uh, or heard him on Web Comics Weekly. All great things uh, that uh, he's a part of. But w- he and I do a or did for for a while a weekly comedy podcast that was improvised based on the uh, live tweets from people watching the show online. And so uh, you can listen to, I think we had 75 episodes that we did, and they're at tweetmeharder.com, or uh, just search Tweet Me Harder on iTunes. Mm -hmm. And then you also collected those conversations as a book. Yeah, we did one book collection that was uh, 10 hours worth of conversations uh, between Chris and I uh, that we published as a book, and it was also illustrated, annotated, footnoted, and indexed by topic. Uh, So it was the, the ultimate Tweet Me Harder companion called, Hey World, Here Are Some Suggestions. Where you talk about things like uh, having children means you can no longer pursue a creative life because you pass on whatever <laughs> whatever energy that you had as a creator into your child, like the Highlander. Uh, yeah, that, that, that part's super depressing. <laughs> but um, we also talked about things like why Garfield hates Mondays. I mean, it's not like he has a job. That's true. Why would he bother? And uh, eventually what we discovered is that, well, I'll let you read the book, but in, in, in a nutshell... Uh, he was born in, in an Italian restaurant, as you may know, and so he was probably raised to be a meat cat for lasagna, and so his consuming of lasagna is just his futile attempt to realize his, uh, the purpose of his life. Oh. So, so. We, we unpack all that in, in, the course of, in the course of, I don't know, 30 minutes or so on the show. Yeah, and you guys never you guys never crack up or break character, at least not often. <laughs> you usually you, t- you take it very seriously as you talk about all this funny stuff. It's so. a serious topic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I'm sorry, I shouldn't laugh. Uh, okay, so yes, now we can turn to uh, the Scarecrow and Mr. Dave Roman and talk about Astronaut Academy, yaytime.com. What's Astronaut Academy? It's coming out at what? Like a, the the you got a book launch party coming up in New York City, right? Yep, next Friday. No. Yep, not next Friday. Not not <laughs> next next Friday either. She can just answer. <laughs> <laughs> Saturday, June eleventh. Sounds good. Okay, yeah. so so Dave, t- tell us about Astronaut Academy. Um, Astronaut Academy is about a boy named Hakata Soy, who is a former space hero who uh, has to enroll at school. Um, but it's not really about Hakata Soy. It's actually about all the eccentric, weird kids that go to school with Hakata Soy. Um, so every chapter of the book is told from the perspective of a different kid. And yeah, it's supposed to be funny. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's it's a uh, it's a book for young people too. We should point that out, right? Uh, hopefully, young yeah. I mean, young and young at heart, right? <laughs> <laughs> why, why, why are you shimming around like a little kid looking at his he shoes? He's terrible at telling people how awesome his book is. He's like, it's okay. <laughs> like, well, okay. Let's put it on. Yeah, do you have a copy? Of it? Yeah, there we go. Let's hey. see. And it's got the, the, what is that, like like a, a hollow foil cover? What is this, 1996, Dave? No, that's good. <laughs> that means people can use it, like in case they need to fix their makeup. That's right. They might pick up the book too. So no, actually, I love it's it. It's actually really hard to photograph. Like when the <laughs> when the art first came in, we wanted to take a picture so we could put it up on the internet, but it was hard to get a picture of it without me like holding the camera in the book <laughs> appearing. Actually, do you guys remember Laser Blazers stickers? Do you remember those? They were the hologram stickers from the er, er, mid-80s. They were really popular. They were always square, and they'd have like 18 ones, be like Mr. T and George Papard and whatever. I or probably bots. But yeah, I, I, I've got some. I've actually got some Mr. <laughs> T laser blazers that my friend Sean Robert of BrandonInTheEighties.com got for me. And uh, oh man, I would I would just I would punch my dad in the stomach to get uh, some laser blazers made of my comics. <laughs> and I love my dad, but but anyway, <laughs> you guys don't really don't remember them. Um, huh? No, they yeah, I, I, I totally do. You get them. At, you, <laughs> yeah, you get them at the gas station. Yeah, with, with two books of green stamps. <laughs> 
But anyway, okay. So I want to I want to you know segue uh, into talking a little bit about this this marketing jazz because uh, jumping off what Raina just said about Dave and how he was looking at his shoes when he was trying to tell us about his book Astronaut Academy at yaytime.com. But okay, so as I was watching your feed, your Twitter feed, uh, Malky, and mm-hmm. you were you've been going around at all your stops looking for copies of Machine of Death and uh, dropping in. What are you putting in those things? Oh, I have a bunch of stuff. Uh, I have Machine of Death. Well, okay. So the premise of Machine of Death is that this machine can. Uh, take a blood sample from you and then spit out a little card that tells you how you're going to die in just one or two words. And so we had a bunch of these cards made and I'm bringing them with me wherever I go. And we, we send them to people if they want to send us a self-addressed stamped envelope, we'll send them their prediction in the mail. You can look at machineofdeath.net for information on how to get a free death prediction. Uh, I put them into orders of my books and so on and uh, I give them out at shows. And I also... I just like to check bookstores when I travel because I like to see what stores carry the book. It's sort of a metric of, of, of like our penetration in that, in that way. I just want to see how extensive you know, that, uh, that distribution is. And so I've been pleased to discover that airport borders typically have it. Mm. And um, most Barnes and & Nobles and borders have it as well, not everyone. And, and some independent stores have it too, which is really neat. So I carry the cards with me, and I also carry this... Uh, Embosser. It's like, oh. a, it's like it's like a notary stamp, and it has a Machine of Death uh, logo. Oh, cool! On it. And so when I go to the bookstore, I will um, put a Machine of Death card at random into the book for someone to discover later. And then I'll do you also ask the bookstore owners if you can do it, or do you just do it? Well, I started just doing it, but then I realized that when you tell the bookstore clerk about it, then they put a sticker on the cover and put the book face out, and Ooh. that also makes the book non-returnable. So ah. it's uh, every time I do that, I'm essentially making six dollars. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's um, uh, and then yeah, and then the book gets placed face out, and it's an autographed copy, and maybe somebody's going to pick it up, and then they wouldn't before. So I think it, it and and the I was r- terminally shy about doing this, especially over at there was a Barnes Noble by my house that had like six copies, and I'm like, can I please sign these books? Is it okay? <laughs> Because I feel like I'm super presumptuous about it. It's just like it's like a, it's a big trouble for them to like. No, oh, we gotta find the stickers and blah blah blah. Uh, but in general, people have been like super excited and really receptive to their being like, oh, the author is here. Like, let's yes, let's call this person over and oh, it's very nice to meet you. And it's like, oh, that's very really nice. <laughs> um, so it's gotten easier uh, to to ask about it because it's it, it's been um, like people have been really pleased to have a book that's been signed and now their store looks cool. Mm-hmm. And uh, in fact, uh, Ryan, my, one of my co-editors, lives in Toronto. And I was just there a couple weeks ago and we went to a, a bookstore in Toronto and um, amazingly, they had 24 copies, which is <laughs> incredible. And wow. so we, <laughs> Ryan and I both signed all of them. And we had, like, we were there for like half an hour <laughs> and it was super awesome, amazing. And then they like pulled books off the new release, like face out shelf and put ours on there. And it's like, of course we want you to do that. But yes, that's exactly what we want. Um, so yeah, I went to the borders uh, at the Detroit airport when I was just coming into town. I went to the one in Ann Arbor just like an hour ago. And then and I uh, uh, signed it and I, I put the, the embossed seal on the cover. And the embossed seal is kind of cool because um, if the book, like if you get a book with an embossed seal, you know that if it's ever replaced in the night with an identical duplicate, you'll be able to tell. <laughs> That's true. So, I, I, I think about that all the time. It's an important <laughs> security measure. You really have no way of knowing how many of your possessions are replaced with identical duplicates while you sleep. Yeah, yeah. Just all fa- the time. Those faceless blue people are always coming into my house and changing around my things. Yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, this, this comes, I mean, just for, to be, like, nerdy and serious for a second, uh, this comes to something that I think is, like, is, like Machine of Death is also available as a, an ebook download. Yeah. P, uh, you have it as a PDF, too, don't you? You can get a free PDF. If you just go to our website, machineofdeath.net, two clicks, you'll have a PDF downloading on your computer. Okay, so you're giving the stuff away, and then here comes that old, what's getting to be a tired argument is that, well, how do you make any money off of this? Yeah. Well, you're talking about the, the book isn't scarce anymore. What you've made scarce is your personal touch. You've touched this thing. Yeah, but you can still buy the book on Amazon. Like, we're still totally happy for you to buy the common version on right. Amazon or through our website or through, you know, your local bookstore. Um, what we've discovered, and uh, I think this is this is sort of the webcomics argument writ large, because I first encountered Reina's work uh, on the web. I was reading Smile when it was a webcomic, and I read Astronaut Elementary as a webcomic. And uh, that's, that's how I, I first heard of both of these guys. And, and I have only ever read Wondermark as a woodcock. Right, so. right. And, yeah. and so um, 
I know that Smile is great because I had read it before in that format in a way that there were no barriers between. So if I want to give a gift to someone, I already have you know, Smile in my mind. It's like, oh, this would be a great gift for my niece or someone mm-hmm. like that. And so um, that's the really – and I think the same is true of print books in a way where if you can get people aware of it, you can make them into fans of it. Well, sure, yeah. And so it's easier than just to present it and let someone fall in love is, is a much – a more rewarding kind of engagement than always to try and be selling people on a product that you can't show them until they buy it. And then there's this barrier where they're like, ah, am I being sold a bill of goods? I don't know if it's going to be good enough. And um, the argument is always, you know, will being able to read it for free uh, destroy the demand for the, the print version? But I think that a, a, a print version of, of a webcomic or... Uh, a, a hard copy of Machine of Death versus a PDF that you have to read on your screen or, or a print version of, of, of either of these guys' uh, work is a superior way to read. Mm-hmm. You don't have to be clicking. You don't have to be staring at a screen all day long. And so I think if you... Uh, and your olds do not necessarily agree. <laughs> what, what was that again? I'm, find- I'm, I'm finding that a lot of kids just don't think about reading something in a book versus on a screen. They just want to read a story. Hmm. And so a lot of people are looking for ways to read books that are already in print online. And I think that's where you get into, like, pirating of manga and, you know, people expecting that everything should be free and online and ready to go. Sure. Um, but I think if they, had an, if they had access to the book in print, it wouldn't be the same. I don't know. Like, I think <laughs> this is opening up a big can of worms, but... Let's go there. I that's interesting. Yeah. Okay, I have a lot of people that are searching how can I read Smile online for free? And it's still on the internet. It's still on webcomicsnation.com slash Reina. And it's not the full book. It's just the first 80 pages, and it's not in color. So a lot of people find that. But what they're looking for is the full thing in color for free to read right this second. They do not want to have to go to the library. They don't want to have to go to a store. They don't have $10 to buy the book themselves. They need someone else to buy it for them. So there's this barrier, it seems. Like, people just want it right now, but they can't always get it. Um, and Scholastic has not developed an ebook version of it yet, so there's no current way to read the book online or on a digital device. Are we talking Which about... Like, not digital devices. So. Well, that's what, I, that's what I was going to say. Is that I'm wondering if we're talking about different audiences here, because I teach a lot of teens and preteens, and a lot of my comics classes are at least 50% girls. Right. Right. Yeah. And uh, and and whenever I tell them about a comic, like I'll mention, you know, Smile, or I'll mention somebody else, and they'll 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 pull out their iPod Touches, and they just want mm-hmm. it on that. They consume so much of their media on those devices, but that's that age group, right? So I wonder if that's like, you know, Malky, when you're talking about something like Machine of Death, that's not marketed towards twelve year old girls, sure. is it? No. Well, I mean, we've tried. <laughs> Believe us, we've tried. Um, but uh, no, I think that that that's totally fair, and that's uh, something like Machine of Death or something even like Wonder Mark is a different uh, target audience than than um, a young adult book, mm-hmm. and so that's an audience that I don't have as much familiarity with, and I'm sure as those you know, that generation comes of age, expecting everything to be available in their hand all the time, you know, we may have, uh, yeah, it 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 may not be as easy of a of a of a thing to say. Oh, just just buy the book if you really like it. But uh, what I do know is just anecdotally, um, people that come up to me at a show and say, I've been hearing about Machine of Death, and I, I, I downloaded your PDF, and I read the first three chapters, and I really liked it. And you know what? Since you're here, I'm just going to grab the book. Yeah. You know, yeah. Or, or it was on Amazon for $11.80. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd rather have that because that's a gift I can give. And I think that gift giving is huge in books. I think you're right. And I remember Neil Gaiman's book, The Graveyard Book. Um, when he did a, his release tour, he went from, what is it, city to city, and he read a different chapter every time. And it was a video, uh, like a live stream, that he was doing every every week. I think it was once a week. And so I was working on, I think I was designing one of these books, and I'm just sitting there in Photoshop all day long. And so I just had this playing in the background. They had all the videos archived. Mm-hmm. So I listened to essentially the entire audio book for free. <laughs> and then when Christmas, it was like November, and then it's Christmas time, and it's like, oh, three copies of the graveyard book to mm-hmm. give to my, my nephew and my, you know, this and that. So I feel like, you know, that's not the entire book market, obviously, but the more people are aware of it, the more it's on the top of their mind when it comes time to buy a book. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I'll agree with that. And and uh, but then also the, coming back to this idea of these <laughs> impromptu signings that you've been doing. Uh, these unannounced signings, which I think is a terrific idea, uh, it, it both is doing research for yourself, but it's also like you were pointing out, it, it adds value or it adds um, what's it called? It, it brings them into the public eye. Yeah. Uh, so, but th there's a scarcity there in terms of your putting your touch on the book, signing the book, right? Like yeah. if, if you have a, super, I mean, Raina, how many people come to your signings, right? Um, the biggest signing I ever did had 120 kids at it. Yeah, see, that that's was great. Canada, Canada is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a typical signing, twenty-five people. We lost you for a second, but a lot of times people. We lost you for a split second. Could just could you say that again? Sorry. It's okay. Um, a typical signing probably has between ten and twenty-five people, but a lot of times people bring their own books. They're not there to buy the book; they've already got a copy of it. Um, and at conventions, it varies. I mean, I. Sometimes sell 40 books at a convention. Sometimes it's more than that. It just depends where the signing is and what the the tone of the event is. Yeah, and and, and I've had the, the few conventions I've gone to. I've had people who drive 12 hours to be there to buy the book, even though the entire book is online for free. So you know, th th there's the arguments that we have made a million times. But I want to I want to go back to this idea of uh, marketing strategies because something interesting happened with Machine of Death. When what you guys did is you crowdsourced some. Uh... Yeah, well, well, the thing with Machine of Death was um, we had this when we first came up with the idea. When Ryan had the idea, and we realized that people were having this cool reaction to it, uh, we thought like there's potential here. Like we could maybe get this published. And this was you know 2007 was when we started uh, soliciting submissions for the book. And back then it was like time to get a publisher. Like that's that's a huge goal, right? And and you know that's always that's always a, a, a big big uh, help in any small project. So we put the book together, we, we put the illustrations together. We had a manuscript that we were super proud of and we tried to shopping it to publishers. And we got, I think it was four different agents at, at various times looked at it and were like, this is really cool. And some of them tried, you know, six, eight months to try and sell it to different publishers. And everyone said the same thing. It was like, short story anthology? Are you serious? Uh, do you know what the book industry is going through right now, 2008? You know, it's like yeah. you guys are nuts. But this book is great. I hope it. You know, I, hope, I wish you guys luck. And so after going down this road, you know, three or four times, it was like, well, at, at that point, a couple years later, both Ryan and myself had sort of savvied up in terms of like, like, uh, you know, self-publishing. We just we just knew more about it. I'd made three Dark Horse books in that time, and I thought I, I knew more about making books than I did when we started. And, and so I, um, when, once I was confident that we'd exhausted all the options, it was like, well, time to do it ourselves. And so we said, okay, well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the book back. We're going to self-publish it, and just to kind of as a, a try and experiment. Let's see if we can get on the Amazon charts uh, as a self-published book, just kind of as a as an experiment, as a as a David and Goliath story. It's like we believe in this book enough, and we believe in the power of the internet enough that we think we could actually do this on our own. And so we um, we asked everybody to buy the book on the same day, which was October 26th of last year, and uh, they did, and we became the number one best-selling book on Amazon for like 30 hours. And then there was a stroke of luck in there. Yeah, well what we discovered after the fact was <laughs> um, we tried to pick a day where no one, no one else had a book coming out, but we mm -hmm. failed because we don't know anything about publishing. And so we got, uh, our book came out the same day as a new John Grisham book, a new Barefoot Contessa Cook book, a new uh, uh, or Keith Richards' autobiography, wow. and <laughs> uh, uh, Glenn Beck's, uh, one of his latest books. And uh, we beat all of them by accident. And yay. So, yay, right? <laughs> and uh, and people were really intrigued by this, like, what are these guys doing? And because the Amazon rankings are so public, they could see it working. And so they were like, and then Amazon discretionarily slashed the price and and gave us a discount. Or you know, we we got the same money, but they they gave the customers a discount. And so then it became like nine dollars to buy into this thing that was going on on the internet. Awesome. And um, that that you know you were hearing on your Twitter feed from twenty different people that day. And so. Uh, it became an impulse buy, I think. So anyway, um, but we beat all those books. And then Glenn Beck was the one who um, 
didn't take it as well as, as maybe, I mean, who knows, maybe John Grisham threw a shoe through a TV. But, um, uh, on his radio show the next day, he called us part of the liberal culture of death that's destroying America, <laughs> which is like super awesome. Like we, we couldn't get any better than that. And so we started to get people saying, I don't know what this is, but if it pisses off Glenn Beck, give me 10. <laughs> And so that helped us tremendously, and um, <laughs> purely by accident. And, and we continue to think it's hilarious. Uh, and we may put that quote on our next cover. You know, who knows? <laughs> um, so that sort of thing um, uh, happened, uh, I mean, serendipitously, but also by design, because we, we, d we deliberately were telling people, this is what we're doing, and here's how you can be a part of it. And, and all it takes is you know, uh, a, a purchase on Amazon or just a retweet of our thing or just to read our, our website and, and, and whatever. And it was cool to see people come together like that. And yeah. um, the danger, I, I think, is, oh, well, and, and then uh, just real quick, what happened then was everyone who had passed on the book started writing us emails. And the people that pay attention to that stuff, like the Amazon rankings, started to, to sort of notice us because we weren't in any of the catalogs, we weren't in any of the pre, you know, advanced copies, and had never gone out to reviewers, no one knew what this thing was. So we got these emails that were like, who are you, what are you doing? <laughs> or, we googled you, we know what you're doing, this is amazing, how can we do business with you? Ah. And so from there, I was able to call up uh, an eight, one of the agents that had worked on the book in the past, and I said, it's actually kind of funny, I, I, I call him up and I go, hey, PJ, it's David. He goes, hi, and I go, big news, he goes, yeah. I go, oh, you, you, you've heard, he goes, no. <laughs> I say, Machine of Death is number one on Amazon. And he goes, what? And I hear click, 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 click. David, this is amazing. <laughs> How did you do this? And I said, we asked everyone to buy the book. And they did. <laughs> and, um, and then from there, like, he swung into action, and he got a, a distribution deal. And so the books that are in, Am that are in Barnes and & Nobles and, and, and Amazon now, actually, and Borders and everywhere else are traditionally distributed, but there are self-published books. And so uh, we have, you know, you know, we've had conversations about foreign rights and, you know, different things as well as a result of that sort of big burst of, of attention at the beginning. Well, there's two things I want to touch on in this. That I mean, you, you use the word serendipity, and um, I can see somebody listening going, oh, well, Twitter and Facebook, that's just the secret sauce. Right. All you got to do is just ask people to do exactly. something for you, and then boom, success, that's right? That's the danger. Yeah. And, and but it should uh, be noted that you had been working really hard in web comics for years, building up a constituency before you could even pull something like that off. You can't just get a Twitter account and start something like that. Exactly. And we got a lot of emails from people who are saying, like, congratulations on Machine of Death. I have a book on gardening for dogs. Let's do it. <laughs> and it's like, you know, I want to be number one, too. And it's like, yeah. okay. Uh, but you're absolutely right. Uh, like, like the, the last thing we want to do is to hold this up and say, self-publishing is the future, everyone, yeah. because it's non-repeatable. Um, it's, yeah. it's just this combination of events is one data point in, a, in an entire industry full of successes and failures. And we couldn't even do this again if we wanted to, I don't think. Mm. Um, Ryan and I... You winked when you said that. Uh, well, that was just because <laughs> I'm incredibly attracted to you. <laughs> um, the... Uh, uh, Ryan and I uh, collectively have 16 years of giving away free content online yeah. and building goodwill that we could cash in once every 16 years, you right. know? And the book was, uh, the illustrators and the authors in the book collectively, there were 65 of them collectively, had, uh, uh, you know, audiences of their own that they, they drew in to participate as well. And there's also a value in traditional promotion too, right? This is where I want to turn to Raina and get her take on this. Well, Dave and Raina, for that matter, because, whoop, look at that, making a mess. Um, because you guys, am I, am I correct that you spent half of your income last year on touring the country <laughs> for, to promote your books? Uh, possibly. <laughs> yeah, well, the thing about children's books is there's so many of them out there, and librarians and teachers are constantly like, oh, you should read this book. This book's great. Read this other book. But to get a book to really become like a huge hit, some something has to happen. Either it has to go viral. Kids have to start recommending it to one another. But um, it's I feel like it's my job as an author to sort of get out there and tell the kids that they should read it and, and put it in front of their face. Because if it's not in front of their face, you know, how are they going to know about it? So... Right. Yeah, when, I just, when you're dealing I just with that age group, I guess you can't just count on Facebook because if they're under 12, no. they're, they're not supposed to be on Facebook anyway, right? So. And there's a lot, 
wonderful bloggers out there that write book blogs and recommend books, but it's mostly aimed at parents. So, you know, it's one thing to recommend books to parents, but it's another thing to give them right to kids and to get the kids excited about it. Right. So, um, yeah, I just designed sort of a lecture and slideshow and went to as many schools, as many libraries, and as many conventions as I could. And mm. um, Dave came with me, and it was awesome. And we <laughs> met hundreds and hundreds of kids. I did one tour in California that was 15 days long, and I think I remember my numbers being like I signed like 900 books while I was on the road, wow. just between all of the different events that I did. And I was doing like two and three events a day. Wow. So that was pretty great. And I mean, 900 books might not sound like a lot in the grand scheme of things, but that's like hand to hand sales. And yeah. that's, yeah, that's, you know, huge. kids in your face that you're meeting who are telling you that they liked your book. Um, and I think then it trickles outward, like for each kid that gets excited about something, they'll tell more kids about it. Yeah, and then their teacher will find out about it. And so I've just heard a lot of great stories about a copy of the book in a classroom that circulates between all 30 kids. And that there is, you know, a waiting list, like 25 deep to get to it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is pretty awesome. But it, it, it should be noted that this is, you know, it's like every cartoonist, when they start out putting their comics online, they're dreaming about signing a book for somebody, right? Or at least most of them. I know there's some out there who just want to do the webcomics. So that's, I don't know. No, no, no judgment, call. I'm just saying that we can fairly uh, safely assume that a lot of cartoonists want to have that experience. So they sign something and give it to somebody who's very happy to get it. Uh, and then... You put that in the context of the tour that you did. That's backbreaking work, right? I mean, oh Malky, you do a lot of shows. <laughs> yeah, you guys all do a lot of shows, and it's 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 yeah. tough work, right? I uh, have no stamina. That's the problem. <laughs> it's like I'm like, yeah, I did three events in a day, but in between each event, I'd be like lying on my back, like in a corner somewhere, like trying to sleep, and then <laughs> holding up the strength to. I can't imagine. Get to the Three a day is that 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 that's yeah. like a professional wrestler like <laughs> level of <laughs> level of effort. That's incredible. I know a lot of children's authors who will do four events a day, and I just can't muster up the strength to agree to that just yet. <laughs> Maybe someday. When when I was uh, teaching in Detroit, I did a, a short stint with ArtServe Michigan, and I was doing six classroom <laughs> visits a day, uh, three days a week. And all I did those days was sleep. You know, I, yeah. I, I would teach those six classes and come home and just sleep for 12, 15 hours. Yeah, that, that's yeah. exhausting work. So, you know, it's, I just wanted to underline this is that, you know, you guys are making it work for you and congratulations to you. But it should be noted that this isn't like a magic formula. Yeah. And I think that's the important thing. So what I want to get at and what I want to pick your brains about is since it can't be replicated, there's no one path, there's no uh, tested path that other people can follow then there's got to be a mindset. There's got to be sort of like a way of thinking that you guys have developed to look for these opportunities, right? I'm like an awareness that you develop, or can you describe that? Or is it just something in your DNA and you guys are just naturals? Um, no, I mean, I think, I think, well, I think maybe it helps to have a disposition for it because I know plenty of authors who are like, or and cartoonists especially, who are like, well, I just want to make comics or I just want to write books and then someone else can sell it for me. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe that was true once. I don't even know if it was ever true, but maybe at some point it was. But I am, as much as I wish that could be possible, I just don't think it is anymore. Mm -hmm. um, I think you have to be your own. Like, no one else cares about your work as much as you do. Right? That's you, true. <laughs> you, you, you can never convince someone else to work as hard as you are willing to work for your own work. Um, and especially if that person is a publicist who's working on other books at the same time, Especially double, especially if that if that person is a publicist who is work is working on other books that are more successful than yours, you know it's hard to get them to muster the the, the effort to to put extra care into yours. Mm -hmm. You know the only person who's going to be willing to do that is someone who's personally invested, and maybe that's yourself, or maybe that's your you know your your spouse, or maybe it's you know you have a close circle of friends, or you know something. You doesn't have to be just you all the time. Like if they're traveling together, you know that that that's I would love if my wife could come with me because it'd be way easier to to have the energy to continue if I wasn't just, you know, mm -hmm. traveling on my own all the time. Um, so I think, you know, that's, that sort of thing can be great, having a support system of some sort. But it, it always has to come back to the author and their ability to be both, like, hardworking uh, and, and persistent and also creative and self-critical in a way to evaluate what they're doing and figure out, you know, is this working? Is this the most effective way to do it? Because people can work really hard without accomplishing anything as well. And there's a real, 
you know, level of discernment required to figure out what's the most effective way to do this. Not just let me do all of it, but what's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that that can be learned so much as just, uh, or I don't know that that can be sort of assumed without just being learned through observation and and, and self-analysis. Okay, observation and self-analysis. So uh, just paying attention to the industry, paying attention to how effective your your efforts are being and, uh, you know, paying attention to your colleagues and what they're doing. Um, you know, and seeing what kinds of things, you know, you can, you can take away from this idea or you can try what they're doing and see if that works for you or you can come up with a new idea no one else has ever thought of. Uh, being out there and being really observant is what generates, like with Machine of Death, we had no idea that it was going to, you know, have the, the, the measure of success that it's had. And so once it did, it opened up these doors to like, Wait, what else can we do? 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 And where that has led so far has been, uh, we did a limited edition hardcover set that we sold uh, just 300 of through our website. They were packaged with like a, a like a badge and a certificate and it, like all this special stuff. And then we did a talent show that we put on where we had people come out and sing songs. <laughs> and then uh, the latest is that we opened submissions for a second volume, which are open right now, actually, through July 15th. If you'd like to write a story from Machine of Death, visit machineofdeath.net. <laughs> and so these things, one builds from, from the last. And it's like, how did that go? Oh, we lost David Marina again. Sorry. Oh, no. Didn't mean to interrupt you. No, it's all right. But anyway, I, I, I think that's, that's the crux of it, is being being h- willing to work hard and also constantly striving to make your work better and more efficient. And that's, and that's your creative work and also your, your, your other work, your, the, the stuff that you're doing to try and promote or the stuff you're doing to try and you know, get the work out there. Right, right. But I'm, I'm also curious about getting at some of like uh, an emotional profile, if this makes any sense. Like, okay, like you've been to plenty of conventions. Yeah. You've seen the artist alley where there's that guy with that kind of panicked look in his eye of, this is my last chance. Uh, won't somebody come and buy a book? And I'm wondering what, if <laughs> this is going to sound totally <laughs> lame and totally Charlie Rose, but. Um, what could you describe the thought that goes through your head when you see somebody doing something that works? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. Absolutely. Because yeah, I don't want to be mean to anybody, but um, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. Where there are some people that seem like they understand why they're there, mm-hmm. and some that don't quite seem to understand why they're there. There we go. And there are plenty of people who come to like we'll take conventions as an example, and um, they uh, they say, well, I didn't make any. Yeah, mo- hey, hey, there you are. <laughs> we got well, him back. Welcome back. Um, so, so uh, Jersey's question to me a moment ago was, um, what are, the, like at a convention or something, the people who are doing th- things right, who seem to have a sense of like how to get their work out there, how to promote, versus the people who don't quite understand why they're, you know, like they, they're interested in doing the promotion but don't quite know what to do. What's the thing that separates those, those types of people? What do you think, Dave? <laughs> <laughs> we got a question in the chat here. I should have mentioned this earlier. Is uh, we are streaming live on UStream as we record this, and people can actually ask us questions in the chat client. We will respond to them as best we can. Um, uh, Renee Van Belsen is asking, "How about getting over the awkwardness of talking to complete strangers about your book?" <laughs> I'm wondering if Dave Roman can respond to that. <laughs> uh, you don't. I, I I I think that honestly. It's other people talking about my book, and then I just steal it from them. Once your book is out, you start hearing what people are saying, and you start reading reviews, and it becomes a lot easier about what people are interested in your own work. I'm a very bad gauge of what, of how to describe my own work because for me, my books are a million different things, and I can't focus on just one yeah. succinct, you know, pitch line. Um, so I'm looking forward to reading the reviews so people can tell me <laughs> what I have to tell people what the book is about. <laughs> That's actually a pretty good idea. But what if, what if you only get bad reviews? <laughs> I mean, I'm not talking about you. I'm just saying like for that, that, myth, that, that mythical person who only gets bad reviews. They should maybe reevaluate their work. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, then they, should, they, they shouldn't be out there selling a book that's bad. Oh, okay. That's yeah. well, simple okay. enough. So, okay, so I want to turn to Raina then, and I want to ask the same question that I asked of Malky, is uh, when you see somebody who's doing something that works for them, 
Actually, but Dave and Rain, I'd love you guys to weigh in on this. Can you describe the thought that goes through your head when you see something that's working for somebody else? Is it, oh, darn, I wish I would have thought of that. They win, I lose. Uh, or is is or how do you, if you could just describe, is, 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 is how can I implement this into my strategy? Or is there some kind of wording that you hear in your head? Um, I, not to be so down on myself, but I, I, I tend not to... <laughs> I, I tend to assume that if something worked for someone else, it won't apply to me. Um, it was like Malky was saying, like even with his own success with you know with this book, to replicate that, like you you can't create all those conditions again. Um, I think what works for one person doesn't work for someone else. So you kind of really have to make something work on your own terms, and you have to find your own sort of unique angle and sort of create your own environment to be successful in rather than to see what someone else is doing and be like, oh, I want to have a website like they have a website or I want to have a, you know, oh, they've got a giant banner. Well, let me make a giant banner. I mean, there's there's certain things you can do, but it doesn't matter, you know, like just because you have a big banner now, that doesn't mean like you're going to suddenly be, you know. Right. Yeah. Just- I, I think you can take ideas from people, uh, but you definitely have to adapt it to whatever's appropriate for your own work and your own style and your own personality. Well, the, I was part of a kidlet chat on Twitter last night, and the topic was trends. And so, you know, people were talking about how there's trends in vampire stories, and then there's trends in dystopian stories, and there's all these sort of trends in literature that kind of come and go, and how. You can try to follow those trends, but you're going to be more successful if you don't necessarily follow the trends, but sort of try to make your own trends and to sort of stick to what it is that's true to yourself. And I feel like the same thing sort of applies to promotion. It's like, okay, so this person is a huge internet sensation and they're basing their business model on selling t-shirts. That doesn't apply to what I'm doing. So um, one of the things I did was I went after orthodontists and dentists (laughs) and sort of tried to... Um, tell them about my book and tell, I told my friends like, you know, bring this book to your dentist and see what they think about it. And that ended up being a pretty good idea in the end, because there's a lot of dentists out there. That's a super great idea. And, yeah. and, and uh, ha- having something with a niche like that, I think is a tremendously like, that's a very savvy move. Yeah. So finding, finding your niche and figuring out how to market to your niche. I mean, not everybody can do it, but if you've got, anything up your sleeve like that it's definitely worth looking into so dave will take his books to nasa <laughs> yeah actually I was... isn't there it's not academy in hawaii you were yes. telling me about yeah so we're gonna go to hawaii and try to <laughs> <laughs> that's cool that's awesome actually, yeah that's a part of our motivation is where do we want to go what do we what do we have to do to get to a place that we want to go all right here's a strategy yeah that, that's so, actually a really yeah. good way to do it uh, yeah, Rob, Rob Worley, who does, uh, uh, he writes a comic called Scratch Nine, which is about a cat that can summon any of its nine lives. And I think each one has a different power to help fight crime. And he targeted pet shows, and he did really well by going to pet shows. Yep. So, yeah, yeah, if there is a niche there, yeah, capitalize on that. So, okay, well, I think I think we covered this marketing stuff in, in a pretty thorough, well, I don't want to say thoroughly, but in, in a satisfactory way for me at any rate. Because um, we are coming up on uh, the end of the, the hour, and I don't want to keep you guys too much longer. So, um, yeah, if you have some Q&A from the chat, maybe we can just wrap up with that. Yeah, actually, uh, I'm going to let, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up. If anybody in the chat has any questions, you can go ahead uh, and fire them off now, and we can respond to those. I am going to do, uh, I'm going to do this every episode from now on. I'm going to do a calendar section where all the events that are happening in the Ann Arbor area, comics events, because the three people that I have assembled here are all doing stuff in Ann Arbor today and in the near future. So June 1st, today... At 7 to 8.30 p.m., Malky, you're going to be at the Ann Arbor District Library, downtown branch. What are you going to be doing? Uh, I have a a slideshow called True Stuff from Old Books. And uh, as I mentioned at the top of the show, my uh, my comic is made using illustrations from old magazines and and so on. And so in the course of looking through these old books from the 1800s and finding the illustrations, I often get caught up in the articles, which are a fascinating window into into a, a world of the past. And so I've put together a presentation that... I like to call true stuff from old books, where it's stuff that's funny or amazing or, or, or really just interesting in some way or another, and I'll sort of take uh, the audience through uh, the way that the, the, some of the ways that people 
uh, thought and felt and, and, and invented things back in the past and, and maybe show how they're similar to how we are now. So that's going to be tonight. Tonight at 7 p.m. at the downtown uh, branch multipurpose room. And then on, uh, well, actually, it's open now. Uh, in Chelsea, there is the Comic Jam Fine Art Exhibition at the River Gallery. It's at the ChelseaRiverGallery.com. Dave and Rain are in the show. Fine Arts Exhibition of Comics. So you can see, you can check out their work there. We're going to have an opening reception, actually. Uh, what is it? The 18th. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> right after Kids Read Comics. Uh, so that, but, that, but the exhibition's open now. I've been to it. I got goosebumps when I saw the, your guys' work on the wall, professionally framed, and, and, and that, ah, it just looks gorgeous. I'm so excited about it. So you can go, uh, they're open from uh, Tuesday, Tuesday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can go check out the work there. Uh, I think 10 different artists are in the exhibition. Uh, this Friday in Hamtramck, Michigan, there's the Graphic Novel Reading Club. And that is at the Hamtramck Public Library, and you can find the Facebook event on Facebook.com. Uh, just look for the Hatch Group. Uh, it's uh, Matt Fizell and Sean Beery and a lot of uh, well-established local cartoonists are leading a discussion on uh, Black Hole, Charles Burns' Black Hole. Uh, June 5th, Sunday, Comic Artist Forum here at the Ann Arbor District Library, the free monthly event where it's uh, 1 to 3 p.m., where you can come and hang out and meet other local cartoonists and uh, work on a project together. And uh, we got a guest speaker coming to the event, Eric, Eric Reichenbach, I think is the way you pronounce his name. He's going to be doing a discussion on experimental comics. And uh, we're going to be doing some really cool announcements about some special things happening at the library there that I will not say here. So you have to come now, 1 to 3 p.m. on June 5th, Sunday. And I think, oh, and then also on June 5th on Sunday in Chelsea is the uh, Making Mini Comics Workshop with Matt Fizell at the Chelsea Painters Fair, and that's at ChelseaPainters.com. So I think I can save the other events for next week, and I'll look at the chat again. Um, oh, and yeah, I should say that Dave and Rain are going to be at Kids Read Comics this June, this June 18th, 17th, 18th, and 19th. And actually the 17th, you guys are going to be doing a couple of events here at the Ann Arbor Library, aren't you? Yes. You want to you tell us what you're going to be doing? Uh, we'll be doing a live comics reading. We'll be doing a presentation about how comics are great. Wink, wink. <laughs> and then uh, we'll be uh, hanging out with uh, Kevin Copa, who is the creator of the Avatar Puppet Benders. Uh, so live uh, puppets. The, the Puppet Benders, which you can find on YouTube. Uh, anybody who's a fan of Avatar The Last Airbender will really enjoy those. And yeah, you guys are going to be doing a live show at the library. Uh, I think that's, well, actually I got it on my calendar here. I think it's um, June 17th, 6 to 7.30 is when you guys do your talk. And then from 8 to 9 p.m. at the library, you're gonna be doing the Puppet Benders event. And that, that's leading into kidsreadcomics.org in Chelsea, Michigan, June 18th and 19th, where you can meet Dave and Raina again. Uh, you can see them at the River Gallery. You're gonna see them at their signing tables. They're gonna be leading a ton of workshops for us. A uh, free event to the public in Chelsea where you can meet a bunch of all ages cartoonists and uh, participate in hands on workshops all day long, Saturday and Sunday. So you will find us in the moon bounce or the ball pit. <laughs> <laughs> Did I leave enough time on the schedule for you guys to be able to use the moon bounce? I think I got you guys someplace every hour that weekend. Yes, I'm going to be signing Astronaut Academy copies in the moon bounce. <laughs> It's just, with, a, it's just a scrawl across the page. <laughs> with your shoes on. That's, that's, that's what a rebel Dave is. He leaves his, <laughs> leaves his shoes out in the moon bounce. Um, that Dave Roman is such a bad influence. <laughs> <laughs> that almost sounded like your Krusty the Clown impersonation. I was wondering if you wanted to kick into that. Hey, the only way his business in comics is selling used latex gloves. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I'm going to turn to the chat real quick. I'm going to give you guys a second to think about if you have any uh, web comics or comics recommendations to throw out at the end of the episode. But uh, real quick, we'll go back to the chat and see what anybody has any questions. And we've got, um, well, Swegener is asking, are any of you guys going to be at Heroes Con next weekend? I will be, absolutely. Oh, cool. Charlotte, North Carolina, uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of, uh, of next weekend. I will be uh, there at the Charlotte Convention Center. Yeah, there we go. Are you guys Dave and Raina? Not this year. Oh, uh, and then, oh, 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 don't scroll too fast, yours. So, <laughs> Shiny Info asks, Malky, you mentioned earlier that your sister has a traditional Lebanese name. Are you Lebanese? I'm developing an Arab-American graphic novel collection for a library, and I'd like to add your books. Sure, absolutely. My, uh, my dad is Lebanese. Um, I, uh, 
uh, I reflect my heritage in the form of a, a T-shirt, which says "Ahli ma almuni Arabi," which means my parents never taught me Arabic. <laughs> 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 Not even the swears. I, oh, I, oh, I know the swears, the okay. foods, and the greetings. Okay, okay, yep, that's that's all the Polish I know too. <laughs> So uh, wh- where should Shiny Info get in touch with sure, you? Sure, sure. I mean, you can just look at wondermark.com, or if you'd like to, my books are available from Dark Horse. Or um, there is nothing remotely Arab-American about the content of the books, but I'm pleased to be included. Oh, there we go. And then uh, I think we got to get Dave and Raina back on the line for this question. Oh... People are asking about ALA. Do you go to ALA? ALA, I've been there once. Um, uh, I have... Uh, not made a special trip uh, necessarily, but my friends uh, Bill and Gene from the comic Unshelved do uh, ALA and a lot of the, the book and library shows. So when they were in town one year, I uh, I came out there to visit. But um, you got to hang out at the Unshelved booth. I did, yeah. That's that's like it, Unshelved at ALA is like Elvis. <laughs> I, I, I think I saw some librarians throwing articles of clothing at Bill Barnes. <laughs> right, they were throwing comfortable sweaters at Bill Barnes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, I don't know if we're going to be able to get David Raina back. Oh, no. Uh, do you have other questions that we could we could do in the meantime? Uh, oh, well, Shiny Info is saying that they can, uh, he or she can count on listening to this podcast as professional development now. Absolutely. You can write off the expense of listening to this podcast. And you can actually get some college credit for it. <laughs> oh, is that so, a thing? <laughs> <laughs> so let's... David Raina, are you back? Yay. Oh, I'm not getting any audio from you guys. Uh-oh. No, now we are. We're okay. all good. Good. Dave and Raina, we had a question. Are you guys going to be at ALA this year? Yes. In yes. New Orleans? We'll Artist Alley. Say it again. <laughs> I, I, st- be... I stepped on you, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that? <laughs> no, I didn't. Get that. Okay. Yeah, so, we'll be in the Artist Alley um, between June 24th and 27th. And um, I know I'm going to be doing one signing at the Scholastic booth on Monday, but for the rest of the show, I'll be at our table. And do you have anything on your schedule yet? Okay, then Dave will be at the table the whole weekend. Oh, cool. So Yeah. It's a new thing. They offered free tables to cartoonists. No so fooling. We were like, okay, sounds good. Free tables. Are you listening to comics conventions? Jeez. So um, how, what, do you know anybody else who's going to be there in the artist alley? Um, Eric White, uh, who does Frankie Pickle, and um, my dead ex-girlfriend, um, Brian Sias, who Sias. does uh, board books for little kids. He did Zoe and Robot. Zoe and Robot. Um, and I think Alexis Fajardo is going to be there, who does Kid Beowulf. And Tara Talon, who Tara, does Galaxian. Yes. Oh, Tara Talon of Galaxian, former KRC guest. Yeah, oh, awesome. I, I, I bet they won't be free next year. <laughs> I'll be so bummed out. I don't get to go now. Uh, okay, well, cool. I, I, let's close out. We only got a couple minutes left. Uh, any recommendations, a recommended read for the Ann Arbor area that they should go to their local library today and check out this comic or a web comic? Uh, my recommended read is a comic by Jason Shiga called Book Hunter, which is actually set in a library. Uh, set in the Oakland library system. It's sort of a 70s crime uh, adventure story about the library police. <laughs> and uh, Jason Shiga, if you don't know who he is, tremendously talented, wonderfully innovative mm-hmm. comics creator, book hunter, um, one of his longer graphic novels. And uh, if you're a library fan or even just a, a fan of good, funny comics, I highly recommend Book Hunter. His stuff is wildly funny. What was that one that he did? Was it called Meanwhile, the one with the pipes that, that yeah. led through all the different storytelling? It, it, it was a choose your adventure book that it, instead of turning to a page, you would follow a path off the page onto a tab that you would then turn to another page. And then yeah. the, the path would wind to another tab elsewhere on the page. And it was, it was uh, I don't think Jason is satisfied unless um, his, his book is unable to be comprehended by most of the population. Like, they're so complex, but they're so fascinating. Cool. Well, Dave, Rain, I saw you guys looking at your bookshelves while, while Malky was talking. <laughs> Do you have anything? Yeah. Um, I'm going to recommend a webcomic called I Think You're Sawsome by Sarah Beckin, I think is how you say her last name. And it's basically about the food she eats every day. She'll, like, draw her meals and, like, <laughs> what they mean to her. And <laughs> she's doing guest comics this week. So it's, like, all these different people drawing the food that they eat in a day and talking about talks about body image, talks about, like, weight and self-esteem and stuff, too. So it's, it's kind of an interesting exploration of food and what it means to people, oh. which I enjoy. Did, did, what was, did, you say, did you say what the URL was? 
It's oh man, <laughs> you know the comic's called "I Think You're Awesome." Okay, so um, I'll, I'll I'll link it in the show I notes. Yeah. Okay. So, Dave, what were you going to say? Um, I was going to recommend a book called Things I Hate by Roz Chast, New Yorker cartoonist, um, but I realized it's not actually out yet. So I just looked on my shelf, and the first thing that came up was Yokai Den by Yay. Nina Matsumoto, um, who is a really awesome artist who drew the Zuko story uh, uh-huh. that I co wrote. Um, and yeah, you should get that. I think volume two is actually out now from Del Rey. So. Yokai Den. Yes. Well, thanks, guys. Awesome. So let's let's close out with uh, shout outs to anything else that you guys want to make some noise about. So uh, Dave Roman, Astronaut Academy comes out in. Uh, you got the book signing party uh, coming up. You can find it's June seventh. June seventh. Yes. You, you said eleventh earlier. Earlier, Raina. That's the date of the party. The oh. party is Bergen Street Comics in Brooklyn. Um, and if you go to astronautacademy.com, you will find out information. Or no, no, never mind. <laughs> How about astronautacademy.tumblr.com? Oh, that's right. You've been posting a bunch of behind-the-scenes stuff on the Tumblr, haven't you? So, (laughs) And then you can follow Dave at uh, Yaytime on Twitter, yaytime.com. And uh, just just do a Google search for Yaytime. You're going to find something to do with Dave, right? So and a bunch of really weird stuff. So Dave, is, <laughs> well, Dave is the second link. <laughs> <laughs> I got my safe search on, so I usually It'll just get right. Dave. Uh, Raina Telgemeier, Eisner nominee. Good luck to you this year. Hope you Voting get it. Voting goes until June 13. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's right. You can people can vote now for uh, Smile. Yes. Yeah, all comics yes. professionals, web comic artists, and uh, comic store retailers, I believe, are eligible to vote. And librarians and teachers. Ah, so. And the Eisners, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I don't have anything to promote right now because my next book won't be out until fall of 2012, but I'm working on it right now. Yeah, you actually got the draw again uh, for a change <laughs> after a year of traveling. So, but, but I would think that now it's, it's your turn to travel all over for Dave's book, right? Or no? Or does that not work because that's what she did, so you got to come up with something totally different, Dave. Exactly. Oh, man. Can't eat the formula. <laughs> Although you were nominated for the Yalso Award, which means that you probably will get an Eisner nom next year, right? Isn't that the way it works? It's one, two, three? Yes. Please tell the Eisner committee that that is the case. <laughs> <laughs> that, that will happen. So, okay, well then, uh, so we're going to defer all promotions for between the two of you to yaytime.com. And that makes me turn to Malky. Uh, yeah, well, if you'd like to read Wondermark comics for free, they're at wondermark.com. There's a bunch of bunch of comics on there, eight years' worth of backlog. You can just browse all you like, hit the random button until you're blue in the face. Uh, we ha- we have, uh, of course, Machine of Death at machineofdeath.net. You can download a free PDF on our website. You can also listen to our audiobook podcasts, which are read by uh, friends of ours and also some of the authors themselves. Just search Machine of Death on iTunes or follow the link from our site. And uh, submissions of uh, both stories and uh, illustration portfolios, because we're going to illustrate the stories too. So we'd like to get some folks um, submitting for consideration for that. Um, uh, you can find that information all at machineofdeath.net. Uh, and uh, in case you want to vote for, for Raina for the Eisners, it's eisnervote.com. And you uh-huh. can, our, our friend Dave Kellett is also up uh, for best humor publication uh, for his book, Literature, which he, you can download for free at uh, sheldoncomics.com. Take a read of that or see if you'd like to vote for it. Oh, that was a very nice plug to throw in there. Uh, and you are Malky on Twitter. Malky, M-A-L-K-I. Yeah. And unfortunately, they don't let you use the exclamation point uh, for Twitter <laughs> usernames, right? Uh, you know, I, I put it on everything, and whether they respect it or not is up to them. <laughs> okay, well, thank you guys for this good discussion. Thanks for participating in this inaugural uh, uh, live show. And uh... oh, <laughs> adorable! See, and and this is what you get if you participate live. Everybody is Dave is holding up a drawing that he did of uh, is that you and Reina? Yeah, but we're backwards. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. See, in, <laughs> like our gone fishing sign, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's. I'll just keep talking to it even after we're done. Uh, but yeah, you, you only get to see that by participating live, and that is at uh, comicsaregreat.tv. So thanks again, everybody, for listening and downloading. And until next week, uh, I've been Jersey Droz with jdroz.com and Jersey on the Twitters. Okay, bye. <laughs>